أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد أرسلنا رسلنا بالبينات وأنزلنا معهم الكتاب والميزان ليقوم الناس بالقسط صدق الله العظيم الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين استفى خصوصا على أفضلهم وخاتم النبيين محمد الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى كما ورد في سورة المائدة أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اوفوا بالعقود احلت لكم بهيمه الانعام الا ما يتلى عليكم غير مهل الصيد وانتم حرم ان الله يحكم ما يريد صدق الله العظيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي اللهم ربنا الهنا رشدنا واعذنا من شرور انفسنا اللهم ربنا زدنا ايمانا وهدى وعلما نافعا وعملا صالحا ورزقا حلالا طيبا اللهم ربنا انس وحشتنا في قبورنا وارحمنا بالقران العظيم اللهم اجعله لنا اماما ونورا وهدى ورحمه اللهم ذكرنا منه ما نسينا وعلمنا منه ما جهلنا وارزقنا تلاوته انا الليل وانا النهار واجعله لنا حجة يا رب العالمين امين يا brothers and sisters and sons and daughters in Islam السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته with the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and invoking his help and blessings We are beginning our study of Surah Al-Ma'idah. This is the last of the series of four Madani Surahs, largest and biggest in volume, and at the same time very important also in some respects. These four Surahs, you know, they are the biggest Surahs of the Quran. The biggest Surah Al-Baqarah, comprising of 286 ayat. And for that, the Prophet ﷺ has said, "The kulli shayin zirwatun, the zirwatun of the Quran, Surah Al-Baqarah. Everything has a top, and the top of Quran is Surah Al-Baqarah. Then we had Surah Al Imran, 200 ayat. Then Surah Surah Al Nisa, 176 ayat. And this is the smallest of the four, 120 ayat only. But you know this." Size is decreasing, but the height is increasing. If you keep in your mind the simile of a pyramid, the pyramid as it rises, you know, the size, the breadth is decreasing, but the height is increasing. So actually, although there is a gradual decrease in the size of these surahs, but there is a gradual increase in the level, you know, or height of these surahs. I told you in the very beginning that there are two main themes. We should say one main theme, and the second is a subsidiary theme of these surahs. The main theme is the Sharia, because they were revealed after Hijra and after Hijra in Medina. Now Muslims had their own society; they could manage their own affairs. So to say, it can be said, although you know. This term state cannot be fully applied to the conditions that happened there, the real, the real conditions obtaining in Medina in the beginning. Really, the state in the modern sense of the word established after the victory of Bakka. It was a full-fledged state then, but there was a, definitely a change in the circumstances because at Bakka Muslims were weak. 
They were overpowered, being persecuted. They couldn't decide for themselves. But here now, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, so to say, he entered Medina as an uncrowned king of Medina. So actually, now they could manage their affairs, they could decide things upon, on their own. So that was the difference that happened. So that is why this Sharia now started. But this Sharia started in Surah Al-Baqarah. We may call it in the modern terminology, it was the blueprint of the Sharia of Islam. Sharia of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then as time passes, you know, more details are being given. Preliminary commandments came in Surah Al-Baqarah in most of the cases. But the final commandments in most of the cases, they came in Surah Al-Ma'idah. So here this main theme comes to its climax, to its top. That is why this surah begins with the word, Afu bil uqud Now this sharia is actually a covenant between Allah and the Mumins. Now this covenant, this agreement, this treaty, you have to hold fast to it now. So that is why, and you know the similarity I told you, the first two surahs begin with Alif Lam Meem. Surah Al-Baqarah, Alif Lam Meem. Zalik Al-Kitabu La Rayba Fee. Surah Al-Ibra, Alif Lam Meem. Allahu La Ilaha Illahu. But Surah Al-Nisa started with Ya Yuhannas. <coughs> and this surah starting, Ya Yuhalladina Amanu. There again, you know, a, an advance. That was all the humanity was being addressed. But here, the community of the Muslims. Ya Yuhalladina Amanu. Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu afu bil uqud. What is aqd? An agreement. Uqda, that is knot. You tie two ropes with a knot. So this is uqda. Two parties, two individuals, two groups, when they come to some agreement, it's a contract, then it is aqd. And you know marriage is also called aqd. Why? It's an agreement. It's a social agreement. So actually, aqdul nikah, not only aqd, it's the aqdul nikah. In the same way, all agreements, all contracts, they are aqd. So generally speaking, all contractual obligations you must fulfill. Ya ayyuhalladhin amanu, awfu bil uqud. Take it as a point that you have to fulfill all contractual obligations. But the biggest contractual obligation is this sharia. This is between you and me now. This is my covenant with you. Just as the covenant was taken from Bani Israel. In the same way, now that this Sharia has been completed and it has been given to you now, that is why we shall find in the third ayah, This day I have completed for you your deen. And I have completed on you my blessings. And I have now, I am very much pleased to acknowledge from you, for you the deen of Islam. So now this is a covenant between Allah and the people of faith, the Mu'mineen. Ya ayyuhalladheen amanu afu bil uqood. Now first of all we are having certain instructions regarding the foods, what can be eaten, what cannot be eaten. And these things have been coming not only in Surah Al-Baqarah, also in some of the Makki Surahs also. But this is the final thing. Bahimatul An'am. An'am are the quadrupeds. The animals moving on four. Four legs. An'am. But Bahimatul An'am, out of those animals, quadrupeds, those who graze, who are like cattle, they graze on grass or, you know, vegetation. There are quadrupeds which are the beasts of prey. They kill other animals and eat them. They are not halal. Uhillat lakum bahimatul an'am. All the, all the cattle, who, all the animals like cattle who graze, they are permissible for you. You can take the flesh of these animals. Illa ma yutla alayhim. Except, which is, recited upon you. And it has been recited many a time, you know, even in the Makki Surahs. You know, swine, that is an exception. Although it is also grace. It grazes. It's a quadruped. But this is the exception. Illa ma yutla alaykum. You cannot take the flesh of it. 
غیر و محلی سوئد و انتم حرم there is one exception in this general permission when you are in احرام when you are wearing the sacred robes for the pilgrimage you can't hunt any game that is this this allowed but when you are not in احرام you can have and you can have hunt an animal you know a deer or, or something of, of that sort which is like the cattle you know ان اللہ یحکم ما یرید this is the authority of allah subhanahu wa taala he decides what he whatever he likes you can't question his authority you have accepted him as your lord and you know he is omnipotent he is omniscient he is all wise his knowledge is complete your knowledge is incomplete so you have now to accept the command that is coming from him ان اللہ یحکم ما یرید شورلی اللہ اوڈینز وٹ ہی پلیزز یا یو الذین آمنوا لا تحلوا شاعر اللہ او یو ہو پیپ او یو ہو بلیو ڈونٹ وائلیٹ دی سینکٹیٹی آف دی سمبلز اینڈ ایمبلمز آف اللہ وٹ آر شاعر سم تھنگ ریمائنڈز یو آف سم تھنگ When you are going, you know, round the Safa and Marwa, the story of Hazrat Hajra and Ismail comes to you, to your mind. It is reminding you of that story. So, these are Shairullah. When you are praying behind the stone, you know that Maqam Ibrahim, now Ibrahim alayhi salam comes to your mind. So, these things, you know, which remind you, something which is very much light by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these things become Shairullah. child from shur which gives you consciousness of something which relates to allah subhanahu wa taala this book is the biggest shaira this is the biggest among the shaira of allah this quran it gives you the consciousness consciousness of allah it gives you the reminding of allah subhanahu wa taala la tuhillu don't violate the sanctity of the emblems or the symbols of allah subhanahu wa taala wala shar al haram and also don't violate the sacred month these sacred months in arabia that was the custom you know that no fighting during these sacred months why these were the months of pilgrimage and one month was for umrah so people used to go to kaaba for pilgrimage so these were the months of peace no fighting no attacking of any caravan and they observed these rules the muslims are also here ordained that don't violate the sanctity walal hadiya and also the animals who are being taken for the sacrifice they also become shairullah because now they are going there to be sacrificed near kaaba wal al qalaid and the animals in whose necks there are garlands they were also a symbol that these are you know for sacrifice wala min al bait al haram and also people who are going towards baitullah the sacred house they also become shairullah because when you see a person in the ihram what does it mean he is going towards the, the house of allah subhanahu wa taala this also becomes sacred so don't interrupt their ways don't obstruct their ways don't tease them don't inflict them with any injury ya ayyuha alladhina amanu la tuhillu la tuhillu shair allah wa al shahr al haram wa al hadiya wa al qalaida wa la amin al bait al haram yabtaghun fadlan min rabbihim wa ridwana why are they going to kaaba they want they seek the bounty of allah subhanahu wa taala they are taking all the trouble of this journey why to seek the bounty of allah subhanahu wa taala is pleasure ridwana wa iza halaltum fastadu when you are out of ihram when you have done away with ihram that robes are no, no more on you all the conditions have been fulfilled then you can go and, and hunt a game you can you know go and hunt a hunting game you know and you can have animals so that you can to use them as their, your food wala yadmanukum shara'an qawmin ala ala an saddukum anil masjid al haram and let not the enmity or hatred of a nation because they obstructed your way for such a long time and they didn't allow you to go to baitullah now this is what is it relating to the quraish of bakka for seven long years muslims couldn't go for umrah 
or for Hajj. So actually now there must be a, a, you know, sentiments of revenge in the in the people. After all, they were human beings. But Allah Subhanahu wa Taala know it doesn't become of you. You are the bondsman of Allah. You have to be a model for all of humanity. Now don't have any revengeful feeling, any vengeance against them. The enmity or hatred that you have of, about that nation. That they obstructed your way. They prevented you from going to Masjid al-Haram. That you also transgress. No. It's not becoming a few. It's the general golden rule. You must help each other. You must assist each other in all the things which are for virtue, for virtue and taqwa. If, if, if someone stands, I, am, I want to go do this work, and this work is virtuous work, good work, good in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I'll help him. You must cooperate. Ta'awun. You know, ta'awun wa al-birr wa taqwa. Whatever is virtuous and whatever has, you know, that taqwa in it, the fear of Allah, the consciousness of Allah, the regard for Allah, in all such matters you must cooperate with each other. Wala ta'awan wala lisme waludwan. Don't cooperate among, in those things which, which imply a sin or transgression against anybody without any right. There you don't cooperate. Although it might be your own nation, although it might be your own tribe, your own family, your own clan. But if they are transgressing, they are doing something wrong, you can't cooperate with them. You have to cooperate with whatever is just, whatever is true, whatever is virtuous, whatever has the taqwa in it. But you can't cooperate in any other things. In Allah shadeed ul Verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very stern in punishment. Shadeed ul He is Rauf, he is Rahim, he is Wadud. But he is also Muntaqin. He takes revenge. He is Shadid ul And he is very stern in punishment. Both these things must be kept in mind. Hurrimat alaykum ul now this is the final commandment, pronouncement from Quran. What is not permissible to eat? Number one, al maita the animal which dies by itself. Number one, maita dead corpse, corpse of the animals. Vaddamu, and number two, blood. Blood is in itself prohibited. And that is the philosophy, you know, that in Islamic way of slaughtering the animal, you only cut the soft parts of the neck so that the big veins and arteries, they are cut. But don't cut this vertebral column, because the spinal cord which is passing through it, if it remains intact, then there is the contraction in whole of the body, all the muscles contract, so that the whole of the blood of the, of the animals is squeezed out. But if you cut the whole neck, now, because the spinal cord has been cut, now the contraction wouldn't take place. And the blood would remain in the clotted form in all the organs of the body. And because blood is haram, now this slaughtering is, has become haram. Now, this animal you can't take. You have to slaughter it in the Islamic way. And that is called tazkiya with zal. One is tazkiya with za. Tazkiya. Tazkiyah to nafs, purification of the souls. And tazkiyah with zal means slaughtering in this way that the maximum blood out of the animal's body is squeezed. But damo wa lahmul khinzir, and the meat, flesh of swine. Baba hilla li ghairi bihi. And on which animal the name of anybody else except Allah has been invoked. Although it is goat or sheep, absolutely permissible, but the name of Allah has not been invoked on it when slaughtering. And you are doing also, you know, the, the ziba, the taskiya in the proper Islamic way. But the name of somebody else has been taken. That somebody else can be some god or goddess, or the way he can be, you know, some Aliya Allah. If you have taken the name of that person, not of Allah, it becomes haram. Now there are four forms of dead animals 
which have been made clear. So that there should be no doubt about it. Mulkhaniqah, an animal that dies of strangulation. For example, you have tied your, your goat to a peg with a rope. Somehow that rope comes round the neck of the goat. And the goat, you know, she goat, it is strangled by its own rope and dies. Mulkhaniqah, by strangulation. Walmaquza, and killed by a blow, a blunt blow, and the animal is killed. Now what happened? The blood remains in, in the body. It has not been squeezed out. In the same way, Walnatiha, you know, some killed by falling. Walmutaraddiya, walmulkhaniqa, walmaquza, walmutaraddiya, mutaraddiya, falling. Some animals, some goats, some sheep. Fell, fell from height and died. When Natiha, some is gored by the horns of another animal. All these forms, when the animal is dead, but if you can find it alive and you can make zima on it, then it will be okay. But if it had already dead, it is already dead. Maybe it is Mulkhaniqa due to strangulation. Maybe it is Maquza that is killed by falling. Mutaraddiya. Natiha, killed by a blow, or it may be Natiha, that is, you know, by goring. But all these forms of dead animals, you can't take the meat of it. It is haram. وَمَا أَكَلَ السَّبْعُ إِلَّا مَا زَكَّتُمْ In the same way, if a beast of prey has, you know, taken some deer or something or else, captured it, and it has eaten some part of it, now, if you have reached that animal before his death, and you can make this taskiya on it, illa maza ketum, you can take the rest of the meat of that animal. But if the animal is already dead, now you can't eat the remaining part. You know, a lion or a tiger has captured a deer, and he has only, it has only eaten a part of it, and the rest is there. If you reach on this spot, before the death of that animal, that deer, now you perform taskiyah on it, so that the blood is oozed out. The rest of the flesh is permissible for you to eat. But if it is already dead, then you can't. And which had been slaughtered on altars. Altars, you know, they used to be, this is the altar for Lat and Uzza and, and you know, Hobul. So people used to bring their animals there and then they wanted, in a way they wanted to present it to the, their gods and goddesses. But the same will be the case if you are taking the animal to the shrine of a dead Waliullah. But you want, why? Why are you take, have taken the animal there? Why have you not slaughtered it at home? So it remember, resembles the same thing. So actually, Nusub will include that also. Although it was goat or sheep or cow, absolutely permissible, although you perform taskiyah on it and you have slaughtered it in the absolute Islamic way and you have not taken the name of that Waliullah or, or that, you know, Devta or God or Goddess, bus, but you have slaughtered it in the vicinity of that place. Why have you brought it here? There is something wrong. And that is shirk. And that is also, you know, haram. It is not permissible. One tastaqsimu bil azlam. Bil azlam. In the same way, they used to divide things by, you know, raffling arrows. All these things. Because it becomes a sort of gambling. Arrows, raffling. And, you know, by that they're making decisions. Zalikum fisk. All these things are sinful acts. Al yawma yaisal ladina kafaru min dinakum. Now because nearly the whole of the Arabian Peninsula had been captured and conquered by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his companions by the time this surah was revealed. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, These unbelievers have absolutely been disappointed about your deen now. They can't hope that, you know, they can overpower you. They can't hope that they can eliminate Islam. Now they have reconciled to it and they had accepted it. فَلَا تَخْشَوْهُمْ Now there should be no fear of them in your hearts. 
you should be able now you should have the full courage to say whatever is correct and whatever is wrong because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you the full strength and you have overpowered all the tribes of the arabian peninsula al yawm akmaltu lakum deenakum wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati wa raditu lakum al-islam deena this ayah was revealed at the occasion of the last pilgrimage of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the 10th year after hijra but it was placed here you know why because this surah is the surah of covenant that is that is why although it was revealed later but it has been included in this surah this surah is the surah of covenant and allah subhanahu wa taala is taking the final covenant from the muslim now i have completed my deen and now it's, it's, we should have a handshake and you have to abide by it forever now deen has been completed al yawm akmaltu lakum deenakum this day i have completed for you your deen the whole sharia has been given to you watmamtu alaykum ni'mati and i have made made my blessing upon you that is also complete completed upon you my blessings وَرَزِيتُ لَكُمُ الْإِسْلَامَ الْدِينَ And I have approved for you the Al-Islam as the eternal deen. This is the approved deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we have found, you know, in Surah Al-Imran, وَمَنْ يَتَّرْ بَجَقْتِ غَيْرَ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا فَلَنْ يُقْبَرَ بِنُ Now whosoever accepts and takes to him another deen except Islam, it will not be acceptable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. from this day the only deen approved by allah subhanahu wa taala is islam raditu lakum alislam adina fa man isturra fi makhmasatin ghaira mutajannif li ismin whosoever is forced by hunger somebody you know is traveling and he has nothing he has found no hunting he couldn't find any food and now he finds a dead body of an animal and because he is going to die of hunger if that is the condition when he is allowed to take that matter the dead the 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 flesh of that dead animal he is allowed because how otherwise he will die for man is turra fi makhmasatin who has been forced to the extreme due to hunger ghaira mutajannif li ismin without having any inclination towards that sin you must you shouldn't have any inclination you should take only that portion of it that part of it which is essential for you to keep alive not more than that number 1 number 2 you should be taking it hatefully i have to take it to save my life i don't like it it is haram it is not permissible so these two conditions fi maqbasatin it should be extreme you know condition in which one is forced one is facing death if he doesn't take anything now which is not you know although it is not permissible but he if he to, wants to save his life he has to take it zaira mutajannif li ismin but he should not have any inclination towards it he should be taking it regretfully hatefully fa inna allaha ghafurur rahim so this is the concession that allah subhanahu wa taala has given you because he is ghafur he is forgiving and he is rahim is merciful yasaluna la maza uhilla lahum qul uhilla lakum at-tayyibat O Messenger of Allah, O Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, these people are asking you, what is permissible for them? Tell them all the good and pure things. For Allah, like what are you about? All the things which are good and pure. Wama alam tu min al jawari hai mukallibin, and which you train, you know, the birds of prey and the animals of prey. They used to prey and they used to hunt through dogs. or the birds of prey they train them so that they can catch other birds and then then it becomes you know a food for you so you train them mimma allamakumullah out of that knowledge which allah subhanahu wa taala has given you you could train your dog for this hunting only because allah subhanahu wa taala has given you the faculty of doing it you could train only this bird of prey for hunting because allah subhanahu wa taala has given you the capacity to do it fa kulu mimma amsakna alaykum now what is the training that dog will capture some rabbit or something of that type but won't eat it because that is the training it will keep that animal for the master to come 
and then you know he will make ziba. So actually, am satna alaykum. Whatever they have retained for you, and kept for you, was kurus ma'allahi alayhi, and now you take the name of Allah on that, but taqullah, and have taqwa of Allah, have regard of Allah, remain conscious of Allah. In Allah sari'ul hisab, Allah is very swift in taking account. Don't think he will have to go under hard labor to take the account of all the billions and billions and trillions and trillions of people. He is very swift. His computers, you know, they are very topmost computer. You can't imagine. In instance, you know, all the account and all the your, your balance sheet would be prepared and presented to you. Iqra kitabak. Kafa bi nafsik al yawma alayka hasiba. Now go and read. This is the balance sheet you have. Al yawma uhinna lakum utayyibat. وَالْتَعَامُ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ هِلُّ لَكُمْ This day we have declared for you permissible all the pure and good things. وَالْتَعَامُ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ هِلُّ لَكُمْ And the food of those people who were given book before you. Now let me explain here. Some people are saying today, and I think it is not without any weight of argument, that even Hindus are... Hindus of India, they are people of the book. In one way it is, I think, it is acceptable. Why? Because we know to every region of the world, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent prophets and messengers. And we find, you know, similarities in their books, the Upanishads and the Vedas. The prophecies about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they are present in Vedas. So actually, they also belong to the ummah of some messenger of Allah. And you know, a French researcher, Du Bois, he studied the Hindu scriptures in India for 40 long years. And he wrote a book. And he concluded that Manu, the god, of the Hindus is actually Mahanu. Nu. They are actually the people of Nu alayhi salatu wasalam. Because in their traditions also, there is, you know, the mention of a big flood. And that on a, uh, on some, you know, Kashti, some people came here due to that flood. And then, you know, started the civilization in India. So this is a piece of research work. But we can't be sure about these things. There might be essence in these views and in these theories. But you know, the Prophet ﷺ declared only the Yehud and the Nasara as the people of the book. So we can't be sure about any other nation. But maybe, possibly, it is, it is just possible. There is weight in their argument, in their theories. But we can't be sure. As I told you, that maybe that Gautam Bud was also a Nabi of Allah, a Prophet of Allah. Maybe, Krishna. Krishna was a uh, Nabi of Allah. It's just possible. Don't look to what is attributed to them today. Had Quran not told us about Hazrat Masih alayhi salatu wa salam, how could we accept Hazrat Masih alayhi salam as a messenger of Allah if we had known everything about him through Christians? Only because we know him through Quran. That is why we have accepted him as the messenger of Allah. Otherwise, he is the God of the Christians. How could we accept him as a messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So don't go to the things which are attributed to them. We can't say that whatever is attributed to Gautam Buddha is correct. But maybe they were also a biya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but we can't be sure. Only about those whose name appear in Quran, we are sure that they are, they were the prophets of Allah, messengers of Allah. But the possibility is there, but we can't be sure about any individual. So the people of book are only the Jews and the Christians. And the food of these people also who were given the book before you, that is also permissible for you to eat. But it should confirm to do the other regulations. Not because they are eating swine, you can also take it. So that is haram. But you know, if a Jew has slaughtered a goat, well, although he's not taking the name of Allah, but you know that he, he, uh, it must be slaughtered. Not that the head has, has been chopped off, you know. No, that will become haram again. But you know, this kosher meat, as you know, because they slaughter it in the same way. 
cutting only the short, the soft parts of the neck. So that is halal for you. And in the same way, if a Christian is doing it, but those two conditions will remain. It must be tazkiyah, it must be slaughtering in the way that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught us. And then the animal should be permissible it itself. So then actually you can eat the, the flesh or the meat that is presented to you by the Christian. And your food is also permissible for them to eat. And women of strong family background. Muhsanat, Hisn, I told you, is a fortress. Now a woman belongs to a family, a respectable family. That background, you know, is, is very important. Not a prostitute. If a prostitute, if, if she is a Christian or, or she is a Jew and you go and marry her, no, no. It must be belonging to a respectable family. It must be a muhsana. So muhsanat from among the Mormons, from among Muslims. And in the same way, the women of these people, the Jews and Christians who belong to respectable families, they are also permissible. You can marry them. When you pay them their dowry, their bridal money, muhsineen, and you also want to have them in the, in the fortress of nikah, zahira musafihin, not only for timely pleasure and, and sensual gratification, wala muttakhizi akhdan, and nor to take them as girlfriends. No. It should be nikah, regular nikah, you want to marry her, you want to keep her now in the fortress of your nikah, then only it is permissible. And whosoever unbelieves with the belief, what does it mean? Yakfur bil iman. He claims to be a mu'min, but he is acting as an unbeliever. His deeds are of the unbelievers. فَمَنْ يَكْفُرْ بِالْإِيمَانِ فَقَدْ حَبِتَ عَمَلُهُ All his good deeds go in vain. It's the same subject which we found, you know, in Surah Al-Baqarah. بَلَا مَنْ كَسَبَ سَيِّئَةً وَأَحَاطَتْ بِهِ خَطِيَتُهُ فَأُولَاكَ أَصْحَابُ النَّارِهُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُهُ Your profession that you profess to be Muslim, well, that is not going to be acceptable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What you have did? What was your attitude? Are you acting like a Mormon? Are you behaving like a Muslim? So only Iman by tongue and lip service. But your actions, your character, your behavior, your attitude, those of unbelievers. Now because you have said some prayers also, and because you have sacrificed goats on the Eid al-Azha also, all these things are good. But all these good things go in vain. The biggest sum multiplied by zero becomes zero. It might be any heap of virtues, maybe like a mountain of virtuous acts. But you know, even one thing, bala man kasaba sayyatan, willfully doing something which is not per allowed and permissible, willfully doing it, and continuing it, continuing doing it. If you have done something wrong, and then you repent, and return to Allah, Allah is forgiving. But if you are continuing, 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 doing it continuously, then only one major sin can also take you to, to, to the fire of hell, and that also eternally. We can't leave this business, and we can't do it without banks, and we have to go and have overdraft, and we must do it, but we are saying our prayers. We go to, you know, Mecca every year. We come there, you know, we are purified there every year. But this condition, this, this attitude, absolutely wrong. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never accept it. All good virtues, zero, multiplied bezo, zero, become zero. How habit amal, which is called habte amal, all the, your deeds, good deeds are gone. Multiplied by zero. وَهُوَ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ And he will be in the hereafter among the losers. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِذَا قُمْتُمْ إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ فَاقْسَلُوا وَجُوهَكُمْ 
Oh, you who believe, when you rise up to say your prayers, you must wash your faces, and your hands till your elbows. And wipe your heads with water. And also wash your feet till the ankles, up till the ankles. If you are unclean due to the seminal discharge, that seminal discharge may be due to coitus, sexual intercourse, or it might be due to a light fall. Now you have to, to have to clean yourself thoroughly. That is, now you have to, have to take a bath. You have to bathe your whole body. But if you are diseased, if you are sick and ill, you can't take a bath. How Allah suffering? Or you are on some journey, you don't find water. Or someone of you comes from, you know, the toilet and he has, you know, answered the call of the nature. Or you had some, you know, intercourse with the women. And you don't find water. So perform tayammum. Now seek pure earth. And now you just rub or wipe your faces and your hands with it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't want to give you hardships or difficulties or impediments in deen. But he does want to purify you. All these commandments are for the purification. He wants to purify you but doesn't want to overburden you. So he has given the concession. If the water is not there, if you are sick, you can't uh, take a bath, okay. Then only tayammum will suffice. So Allah makes the things easy for you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to complete his blessings on you so that you are really grateful to him and thankful to him. Now this is the most important ayah of this surah. I told you this is the surah of covenant. Always keep in mind the blessings of Allah on you. And his covenant that in which he has tied you is kultum samayna awatana. When you said we have heard and we have accepted and we obey and we submit. Now this is a covenant. This Sharia is an agreement, is a covenant between you and your Rabb, your Lord. Vasakakum, he has tied you. Now you are not a free man like other free people. He can do anything he likes, but now you are tied up. Tied up with the peg, like the horse. The likeliness of a Muslim woman is the, to the likeliness of a horse tied to a peg with a rope. Now you are tied. You believe in Allah, you have to obey him. You believe in Messenger of Allah, you have to follow him. You believe in Quran, you have to act upon it. Always keep Allah in your mind. In Allah alimum bazaat is sudur. Verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what is there in your chest. Ya ayyuhalladzina amanu, I refer to this ayah last night also. Ya ayyuhalladzina amanu, kunu qawwameena lillahi shuhada bil qist. This ayah appeared in Surah Al-Nisa also. Only in the reverse, you know, order. Ya ayyuhalladzina amanu, kunu qawwameena bil qist shuhada lillah. That was in Surah Al-Nisa. Ya ayyuhalladzina amanu, kunu qawwameena lillah. Stand up with full force for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now you are his soldiers on earth. You are the policemen of Allah on earth. You are the representatives of Allah on earth. You have to enforce his laws. You have to establish his deen. With full strength that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you, stand up. Kunu qawwameena lillah shuhada bil qist. And you should be a witnesses to whatever is just. You should be enemies of injustice. That is the importance of justice in Islam. Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu kunu qawwamina bil qist shuhada lillah. Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu kunu qawwamina lillah shuhada bil qist. 
and these two things are interchangeable. Allah is the just one. When you are standing upright for Him, you are standing for justice. Kunu qawwamina lillahi shuhada bil qis wala yajrimannakum shanaan uqawmin ala Allah ta'adilu. And look to it that the enmity or hatred of a nation should not be able to take you away from justice. You have to do justice even to the enemy. Allah Allah ta'adilu a'adilu. Do justice. Huwa aqrabu lit taqwa. That is nearer to taqwa. And without taqwa you are nothing. Without taqwa you won't get anything in the hereafter. And justice is nearer to taqwa. Wa taqullah. And have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna allaha khabirun bima ta'amaloon. Verily Allah knows what you are doing. Wa'ada allahu allazina amanu wa amilu salihat. Allah has made a solemn promise with those who come to believe and then they do good deeds. لَهُمْ مَغْفِرَةٌ وَاجِرٌ عَظِيمٌ For them is the forgiveness and a very big reward. وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَكَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا As for those who conceal, now these are two words, you know, كَفَرُوا وَكَذَّبُوا Are they synonymous? Absolutely synonymous. No two words of a language are absolutely synonymous. That's the rule. It's difference. And it's not poetry. It's the kalam of Allah. There's no additional word here. What is kufr? To hide something, it is kufr. Now the nature of a person testifies to it that this is correct. He is suppressing his nature, hiding the testimony of his nature, it is kufr. And what is taqzeeb? Now he is belying it. You are wrong. You are not a prophet of Allah. This is, the, this is a crime of a higher degree. You are suppressing the truth to which your own nature, your own heart is testifying. This is kufr. And you are saying you are wrong. Oh, Muhammad, you are not the Prophet of Allah. This is taqzeeb. وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَكَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا أُولَاكَ أَصْحَابُ الْجَحِيمِ Those who have committed this double crime, they suppressed and, and concealed the testimony of their natures and their souls which was testifying to the truth of Muhammad and the truth of this book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then, you know, they had the courage to say out, you are wrong. This is, you are not the prophet of Allah. You are a liar. Kazab. So whosoever does this, ulaik ashabul jaheem, they are the people of hell. Ya ayu alazina amun uskuru ni'matullahi alaykum iz hamma qawmun an yabsutu ilaykum maidiyahum. Oh, you who believe, just remember Allah's blessing upon you. When a nation is hamma qawmun and yafsutu ilaykum, is a nation but bent upon stretching their hands towards you and fighting you, for killing you. This refers, as far as I can guess, to the incident of Sulah Hudabiyah. The kuffar of Quraysh, they were bent upon doing mischief. But you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala produced the circumstances that they had to conclude the treaty of Hudabiyah. So Allah says, "Hammat qawmun an yafsutu ilaykum adiyahum, fakaf adiyahum ankum." Allah held back their hands from you. They couldn't fight, and that is why Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said, "You know, in Surah Al-Fath, Inna fatahna ala kafatham mubina." We have given you a very clear victory, O Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Moral victory. You have come back with moral victory. Because when Quraysh had to acknowledge Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, recognize Muhammad, you enter into a treaty with a nation or a country when you recognize it. Why were the Arabs not able to talk to Jews before? They were not ready to sit on one table, to be in one room at a time with representatives of Israel. Because any such act would have meant that they have recognized Israel. Now, because they have been overpowered, now they are recognizing one by one. This is the worst punishment that Allah is giving them. Under a nation which is maghdub and malroon, that nation has the upper hand now, which is malroon, the accursed one. Durabat alayhimu zillatu wal maskanatu wa ba'u bi'adabi min Allah. 
there can be no bigger humiliation than this. But you know, this is the recognition. If you talk to them, it is recognition. If you enter into any, any treaty with them, you have recognized. So Quraysh recognized Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That was the biggest treaty. Ya ayyuhal ladhi namur uzkuru ni'mat Allah alaykum iz hamma qawmuna yafsutu ilaykum aidiyahum fakaif fakaffa aidiyahum ankum wa attaqullah. And have taqwa of Allah. Wa ala Allah faliyatawakkal ilmuaminun. And not only taqwa, put whole of your trust in Allah. You must have all your trust and faith in Allah. وَلَقَدْ أَخَذَ اللَّهُ بِيْسَاقَ بَنِ إِسْرَائِيلِ Now because a covenant has been taken from you, O Muslims, just remember the past history. رِيخْتَا کے ایک تمہیں اُسْتَاز نہیں ہو غالب سنتے ہیں اگلے زمانے میں کوئی میر بھی تھا You are not the only Muslim ummah. There was a bigger Muslim ummah than yourself. Why bigger? How many prophets came to them? For 1400 long years the chain of prophethood never broke. Starting with two, Moses and Harun, ending with two, Jesus and John the Baptist. There was not a moment, single moment during these 1400 years that a prophet was not present. Kanat Banu Israel, this is Hadith in, in, in Sahih of Bukhari, Rahimahullah. Kanat Banu Israel, Tasuzuhumul Ambiya, Kullama Halaka Nabiyul Khalafa Nabiyul. Whenever a prophet died, another, another prophet was in his place. So it was a very big ummah. Ya Bani Israel, askaroo ni'mati ya nati alamtu alaykum wa ni faddaltukum ala alameen. These words appear twice for the Jews in the Quran. But what happened? Allah has taken a covenant from them also. Wa laqad akhada Allah wa misaqa Bani Israel wa basna aminum isnae asara naqeeba. We took a covenant from them and we re-raised them in them Twelve monitors. Now, people have translated chieftains and so on, but the best word is Naqib is one who looks after the affairs, who is vigilant what this, these people are doing. So monitoring, monitors just you have in classes, you know, classrooms. With twelve monitors, twelve tribes, with each tribe there was a monitor. And the Prophet ﷺ kept this number. This is important. When the people of Yathrib, they embraced Islam. They gave him their pledge, Ba'atul Aqma, Ba'atul Aqma Tisaniya. Then he appointed twelve monitors, nine among the Khadraj, three among the Aus. But the number, he kept twelve. Asna Ashara Naqeeba. وَقَالَ اللَّهُ And Allah said, إِنِّي مَعَكُمْ O children of Israel, I am with you, my help. My blessings will remain with you. Nine akab tu salat awat hai tu muzaka. If you keep establishing salah and keep on going, giving the obligatory charity, wa aman tum bi rusuli. And if you go on believing in my messengers, messengers will come after messengers. Messengers will come after messengers, and you have to believe in all of them. Wa zatumu hum, and if you support them, support the messengers. You help them. وَأَقْرَسْتُمُ اللَّهَ قَرْضًا حَسَنًا And you keep on giving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a goodly loan, spending in His way. لَوْ كَفْرَنَّ عَنْكُمْ سَيِّعَاتِكُمْ I will cover all your mistakes with my pardoning and my forgiveness. وَأَوْتْخِلَنَّكُمْ جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَعْتِ الْأَنْحَارِ And I will definitely make you enter those gardens underneath which rivers would be flowing. فَمَنْ كَفَرَ بَعْدَ ذَلِكْ as for he who goes back after this, who goes back on the covenant, who breaks the covenant, then he had gone astray and very far off from the right path. Now, now this is a warning for the Muslims. You have also entered into a covenant with me. Before you the same covenant was strengthened between me and Bani Israel. But it was due to the breach of that covenant they did. We curse them. 
وجالنا قلوبهم قاسیہ قلوبهم قاسیہ and we made their hearts hard like stones their hearts hardened yuharifun al-kalim al-mabadi they are changing the places of the words of the text of the of the book torah you know you take out from context change the context of the word the meaning will change walasu hazwa mimma dhukrebu dhukrebu bihi and they forgot a portion of the teaching that was given to them they were admonished with and they forgot it fala tazalu tattali'u ala khairati minhum so oh muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam you will always experience treachery from them you made treaties with them and tribe after tribe broke the treaty they are treacherous when they were treacherous to allah how can you they be faithful to you they broke the covenant with allah how can you expect them that they will keep to the treaty that they have concluded with you illa qalilan minhum except only a few among them there are good souls also but you know hukmul aksar hukmul kull the majority condition of the majority will be taken to be the condition of the all fa'fu anhum wasfah so just ignore them turn away your face from them don't engage yourself in any conflict with them allah will look after them inna allah yuhibbu inna allah yuhibbu al-mursalin if you overlook their mischiefs then allah will be with you allah is with the, pe- the people who do good so you will go on doing good you fulfill your part of the covenant you fulfill your part of the treaty if they are treacherous well they will be punished by allah subhanahu wa taala وَمِنَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّا نَصَارَى أَخَذْنَا مِيثَاقَهُمْ Now the second covenant was taken from those people who called themselves Nasara. وَمِنَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّا نَصَارَى And from those also who called themselves Nasara. أَخَذْنَا مِيثَاقَهُمْ We took the covenant. That is why I told you, I can name this surah as the surah of covenant. Misaq. Misaq from Muslims. There was a misaq from the Jews. There was a misaq from this nasara aqadna misaqahu fa nasu hazwa mimma dhukrubu they also forgot lot of the things which were given to them and with which they were admonished fa urayna bainahum al adabat wal baghza so we have stirred among them enmity and hatred you know it's the history that the blood shedding among different sects of the christians there is no parallel in the history of the world how have they been killing each other it is not the case among the muslims muslims have been by and large very tolerant nation history proves it but you know the sex because most of the history is not not known to most of us that's a different case and then the the enmity between the jews and the christians a long story of history فَأَغْرَقْنَا أَغْرَيْنَا بَيْنَهُمُ الْعَدَاوَةَ وَالْبَغْضَاءَ Enmity and hatred. إِلَىٰ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ And this will remain, this will continue till the day of resurrection. There is going to be an exception and I will later on discuss that exception. It will come, you know, in course of time in this very surah. فَصَوْفَ نُنَبِّهُمْ بِمَا كَانُوا يَسْنَعُونَ And on that day, we shall tell them, all of them, what they had been doing. They will have their balance sheets. each one of them before their eyes ya al kitab qad jaakum rasuluna yubayyinu lakum kaseeran mimma kuntum tukhfuna min al kitab o people of the book o people of the scripture our messenger has come to you yubayyinu lakum and he is making clear and manifest kaseeran mimma kuntum tukhfun most of those things which you had been hiding and concealing you are concealing the true teachings of moses the true teachings of jesus but muhammad has come sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he has brought all the things to the open wa yafu an kaseer but he is also ignoring a lot of it not all of your crimes are being discussed so many things you know we have omitted qad jaakum min allah nurun wa kitabun mubeen not only our messenger has come to you to you has come a clear light from allah subhanahu wa taala and a book 
which is very clear, very self-explanatory, Kitabun Mubeen. Yahdi bihi Allahu man ittaba'a rizwanahu subul as-salam. With this book, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and with this, this light, Allah guides so many people, whosoever want to follow His pleasure, who want to pursue the pleasure of Allah, they can get the guidance from this book. By yukhrijuhum min azulumat ilan nur, and He takes them out from different shades and different depths of darkness into light. You will always find in the Quran Noor as singular, never Anwar. Zulumat as plural, never singular. Why? Light is a positive phenomenon. And what is darkness? When there is no light, it's darkness. And it has different shades, shades of darkness. Light is something one. Minas Zulumat. Now we have the, the, the darkness of kufr, darkness of shirk, darkness of materialism, darkness of atheism, darkness of skepticism. All these things are different shades of darkness. This book of Allah takes you out of all the shades of darkness into the light, light of guidance. وَيَهْدِيهِمْ إِلَىٰ صِرَاطِ مُسْتَقِيمٍ And guides them to the right path, straight path. لَقَدْ كَفَرَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّ اللَّهُ هُوَ الْمَسِيحُ بْنُ مَرْيَمُ Definitely, those people have blasphemed, who have said that Allah is Himself Masih ibn Maryam. I told you, this is God incarnate. The concept that Allah Himself has come down to this earth in the form of, in the person of Isa ibn Maryam. قُلْ لَقَدْ كَفَرَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الْمَسِيحُ بْنُ مَرْيَمُ قُلْ فَمَنْ يَمْلِكُ مِنَ اللَّهِ شَيْئًا Ask them, who will be able to have anything, any, any authority from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in harada yuhlikal masih ibn maryam wa ummahu if Allah decides to assassinate or to eliminate masih ibn maryam or not only masih ibn maryam, also his his mother, Waman Fidar the Jamia. And whosoever is in the earth, Allah can do it in one moment. And to Allah belongs the kingdom and the sovereignty. To Allah belongs the kingdom and sovereignty of all the heavens and the earth. And whatever is in between them, He creates what He pleases, what He likes. Wallahu ala kulli shayin qadeer. And Allah has power over everything. Wa qalat li yahudu wa nasara nahnu abnau lai wa hibbahu. And these Jews and Christians, they say, we are sons of Allah. And we are very much beloved with Him. He loves us. We are the chosen people of the Lord. Nahnu abnau lai, just as a son is dear to his father. So are we dear to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. نَحْنُ عَبْنَاهُ اللَّهِ وَعِبَّاهُ قُلْ فَلِمَا يُعَذِّبُكُمْ بِذُنُوبِكُمْ Ask them, then why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been punishing you due to your sins? Why He persecuted you at the hands of Nebuchadnezzar? Why you were tortured at the hands of the Greeks and at the hands of the Romans? And in this century, at the hands of the Germans, if you are the sons of Allah, you are, are the beloveds of Allah, why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been punishing you? Due to your sins. Bal antum basharum mimman khalaq. Nothing of that type. You are also men from among men who he, whom he has created. He has created all the mankind. And you are also human beings like other human beings. No son of Allah. No beloved of Allah. Allah loves only the righteous one. People who have taqwa. Inna akrabakum in Allah atqaakum. No nation is the beloved of Allah. No group of people can claim that he has some special relationship with Allah. Bal antum basharum mimman khalaq. Yaghfiru li man yasha wa yaazibu man yasha. He will pardon and forgive anybody he pleases. And he will chastise. And he will punish anybody he likes. Wallahu. 
وللہ ملک و سماوات و الارض اینڈ ٹو اللہ بلونگز دی کنگڈم اینڈ سورنٹی اف آل دی ہیون اینڈ دی ارتھ وما بینہما اینڈ اف وٹ ایور از دیئر ان بٹوین دیم و الیہ المصیر اینڈ ٹو ہم از دی ریٹرن اقول قولی ہادا و استغفر اللہ لی و لکم و لسائر المسلمین اب المسلمات اللہ اکبر اللہ اکبر The Islamic Organization of North America, IONA, is an organization dedicated to reviving the Quran into the hearts of Muslims while bringing its message to non-Muslims. The obligations of a Muslim as ordained by the Quran and Sunnah can be understood as having four levels. 1. A Muslim is required to develop real faith and conviction, Iman, in one's heart. 2. A Muslim is required to live a life of complete submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 3. A Muslim is required to propagate and disseminate the message of Islam to humanity as a whole. 4. A Muslim is required to try his utmost in establishing the just Islamic order. The first and foremost objective of establishing IONA is to assist the Muslims in North America to uphold and implement these obligations first on themselves, their families, inform their friends, and then to invite the non-Muslims to Islam. The ultimate goal is to seek Allah's pleasure and salvation in the hereafter. For more information about IONA, please visit us at www.tanzim.us. You may also email us at info at tanzeem.us or call our toll-free number 866-779-IONA. Join us. Together we can make a difference.